Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Each week at this time, from Hollywood, California, Kraft presents Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve. Written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, I wonder what you mean when you use the word progress. Because here's what I mean. Progress means making the old things better and inventing new things that are better than the old. Well, that applies to foods as well as to other things. And modern margarine is an outstanding example. Yes, modern margarine, like parquet margarine made by Kraft, is certainly a lot different from the margarines of even just a few years ago. Yes, all you have to do is to try parquet margarine once to know it's different and better because it tastes so deliciously good. That's why parquet margarine is a favorite everywhere, both for table use and for cooking, too. Now, you all know that proper nutrition is necessary to national defense. Well, parquet margarine is a wholesome, highly nutritious food. In fact, it's one of the best sources of food energy you could serve. And every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So get acquainted with this nourishing modern margarine. Delicious parquet margarine made by Kraft. Remember, it's parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. And now let's visit our friend, the great Gildersleeve. Uh, uh, Let me have some more of that green paper, Rilleroy. Thanks. Hey, who are you sending that necktie to? It's for Cousin Clinton in Iowa. Leroy, you can't do that. He's the one who sent you that tie last year. Oh, well, in that case, I'll mail it to Uncle Stanley. Oh, no. Uncle Stanley gave it to Cousin Clinton the year before. Well, Uncle Mort, how do you know? Because I gave it to Uncle Stanley four years ago. Oh, are you sure it's the same tie? Oh, positively, Marjorie. I'd know those purple stripes and those orange dots anyplace. But, gee, what will I give Cousin Clinton? Oh, I think we can skip him this year if we send him a Christmas card. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Llewellyn. Yes, Miss Marjorie. Be sure to address a card to our Cousin Clinton, will you please? Yes, ma'am. Right away. Yes, uh, say... How are you coming along with the addressing in the ceiling, Llewellyn? Well, I'm a widow groggy. Yeah? I feel as if I'd whipped my weight in Christmas seals. <laughs> I wish they'd get some different flavored glue, like strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, or lime. <laughs> It'll come to that, Llewellyn. You're just a little ahead of time. <laughs> yeah. Here, Leroy, what are you doing? Me? Oh, I just thought I'd see what's in this package Piggy Banks gave me. But, Leroy, if Mark don't open until Christmas. Yes. Haven't you any self-control or willpower, young man? Don't you realize that if you opened all your gifts ahead of time, when Christmas morning came around, you wouldn't have a single toy left to uh, break? But, gee, I caught Marjorie sniffing around the present you gave her, Uncle Mort. I was not, Leroy. Or two. I just happened to drop it, and I was afraid it might be perfume. Oh, yes. Well, it's not perfume. It's a whoops. I almost told you then. (laughs) Now, both you children stop acting childish. Let me alone while I wrap this present. It's for Fibber McGee. I've already sent Molly McGee a big bottle of perfume, so I... Better get Fibber McGee's present in the mail for Wistful Vista tonight. Oh, what did you get for him, Uncle Mort? Something he needs badly. An electrical pants presser. <laughs> it's a neat little gadget, isn't it? Although I doubt if it'll make much of an impression on those gunny sacks McGee wears. <laughs> you think that's enough of a gift for Mr. McGee? Why not? Cost me 39 cents at the cut-rate drugstore. 39 cents? Yeah. Well, I thought Mr. McGee was a close friend of yours. He is, Leroy. He's the closest friend I've got. <laughs> I'm not speaking geographically or intimately. I'm speaking financially. Well, I never knew that. Well, he isn't exactly tight. He's more of the borrow a tool today and return when rusty type. <laughs> the more I think about the things McGee has borrowed, the less I think of him. Who does he imagine he is? The doorbell? I mean the doorbell. It's ringing. <laughs> yeah, I'll get it. Uh, yes? Is this a domicile of truck, Morton P. Gillisleeve? It, it is. This is it, shorty. Okay, look. Hey, this is plenty heavy. Hey, where do you want this box, mister? Uh, put it right down here for now. 
What's in it, uh, mister? Just keep your shirt on, will you, buddy? Oh, yeah. All right, ready, Spike? Yeah, let's get this over with. All right. A one, a two, a three. Oh, oh Gilda the Sleeve, oh, Gilda the Sleeve. What? A Merry Christmas to you. you. Oh, Gilda the Sleeve, oh, Gilda the Sleeve. Are you all tied? Singing expressman, eh? Yeah, yeah. We are something in the nature of an experiment. Oh, I see. <laughs> You're doing it for the company to see if it's satisfactory, yeah? Uh-huh. Oh, no, we're doing it for the men to see if it's remunerative. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes, I get it. Well, here you are, boys. A dime for each of you. A dime. Why, Spike, this guy ain't got no respect for music. Yeah. But he sure got a lot of respect for money. Yeah. Well, I never saw a box so hard to get open. Oh. Must have taken me an hour. Yeah. Now to see what Fibber McGee has sent me. What is it, Uncle Moore? Huh? Yes, yes. Gee, another box. Yeah? And all done up with Christmas wrappings and stuff. Oh, my goodness. Hand me the hatchet again, Leroy. Oh, no, no, Unc. Can't you see what it says? Where? Who? Oh, uh, don't open till Christmas. And this means you, guilty old Snoop. <laughs> 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 McGee never means what he says. Uh, the hatchet, please, Leroy. But, Uncle Moore, where's your willpower? Yes, and how about your self-control? Oh, they're fine. It's my curiosity has got the best of me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gee, let me take one little peek, will you, huh? Now who's acting childish, Uncle Mort? Yeah, you're right, Marjorie. I wasn't setting you a good example. Uh, Hand me some of that ribbon and I'll get this pants presser off to my old chum. Oh, what am I saying? I can't send McGee this dinky little present now. Why not? Because that box probably contains a large, valuable gift for me. Alongside of it, my cheap little crease iron will look like, uh, well, 39 cents. Well, what do you think you should do, Uncle? I better go right downtown and get him something better. Oh, I think that's very nice of you, Uncle Moore. It sure is. I think so, too. Uh, now, in order to get an idea of how much McGee spent so I won't spend any more, uh, don't you think I should take one quick little look as to what he sent me? No! Uh, all right, I was just suggesting. Say, if you're going downtown, you better hurry up. It's getting late and the stores are awfully overcrowded. Oh, I won't have any trouble. Get your cap and coat, Leroy. I'll be right with you, Uncle. Are you taking Leroy through those mobs with you? Yes, Marjorie. He and I have worked out a wonderful system for Christmas shopping. Haven't we, Leroy? I'll say. What kind of a system? Uh, it's called the angle worm formation. Leroy goes ahead and figures out an angle, then I worm my way through. <laughs> <laughs> Store. Yes. Haven't I always said that the best is none too good for Fibber McGee? Well, how do you do, sir? What will it be? Uh, I'm looking for a present for a friend. Do you think he might like a half dozen imported cravats? Say, uh, what's a cravat? A cravat is a necktie that sells for five dollars, Leroy. No, I, I'd like to get him a more substantial gift. Oh, here's something. Maybe he'd like a dressing gown or a robe, huh? Why, yes, we have some lovely ones. Say, in the neighborhood of a hundred dollars. Have you got anything in a cheaper neighborhood? <laughs> well, here are a few in the vicinity of $60. Oh, yes, yes. This brown silk one would be exactly the right thing. If you have it in a smaller size and some other color and a different material and a little less expensive. <laughs> well, then I'll have to go back in the stock room and see what we have there. If you'll just wait a moment. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. Hmm? Yes. Quit trying on those derbies, Leroy. You can never tell who wore them before you did. Well, I only wanted to see how I looked in one, Uncle. How can you see when they come to, down to your nose on you? Now, just stand still. Oh, please. just the sort of person I'm looking for. Oh, huh? excuse me, sir, but there's a little favor I'd like to ask of you. Uh, certainly, madam. What can I do for you? Well, if you see that man standing over there at the sweater counter. Oh, you mean the funny-looking gent with the bat-wing ears and the dirty look? 
Has he been annoying you? No, he's my husband. Oh, he is? Oh, well, I didn't mean that nice-looking chap. I, I was talking about the one in the checkered overcoat standing next to him. Uh, the fat guy that looks like a cross between a scow and a barge. <laughs> That's the one who's my husband, sir. Oh. <laughs> you see, I want to surprise him with his pretty blue robe for Christmas. Oh. But I don't know if it's the right size for him, so I thought that being that you two are of the same build... What? Do you think I'm as chubby as that tubby? No. <laughs> oh, now, please, please, I don't want him to suspect a thing. Why don't you help the lady out, Uncle Mort? Huh? Yes, why not? Here, let me have it, madam. Uh, hold it up, Leroy. Okay. Uh, thanks. Uh, oh, this is so nice of you, really. Not at all. Uh, would you care to have me parade up and down like one of those models? Oh, no. No, thank you. Now, uh, just tie the belt. There. Yeah. Oh, there. Now, turn around, please. Yeah? Oh, dear. What's wrong? Is my slip showing? <laughs> <laughs> well, either I picked the wrong size or else you're stouter than my husband. No, see here, lady. Well, we can soon see. I have a tape measure here in my bag somewhere. Tape measure? I know Leo's size. Oh. Let me see. Oh, yes, here it is. Now, if you'll just put your arms up, I'll flip this tape around your waist and find out what size. Hey, Lee, what are you doing with your arms around that man? Oh, oh, my goodness. Huh? He mustn't find out about the surprise. What? Uh, pretend that you're my, uh, my cousin George. I it's... said, why are you hugging this fellow, Fanny? Oh. Uh, why, uh, Leo, it, it's Cousin George. I haven't seen him for years. You don't blame me for being glad to see my own cousin, do you? No, not at all. Glad to meet you, George. Uh, the pleasure's... The pleasure's... Uh, the pleasure's all mine. Voice still changing, huh? Yeah. Well, George, Fanny's told me all about you, but I always picked you as a different man. Well, I was a different man up till quite recently. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's just too bad that Cousin George is just passing through town and can't stop over for a visit. Huh? Aren't you, Cousin George? Who? Oh, me. Oh, yes, Cousin George. I just happen to be driving Driving? Through. I thought you hated automobiles. Uh, do I? Yeah, didn't the automobile ruin your horse collar business? Oh, I don't know, did it? Oh, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> But I'm not one to hold a grudge. You're not? Well, not more than 20 years, anyway. Hey, that reminds me. What's happened to Francis these days? Uh, Francis? Oh, he's all right. He? Since when is Francis a he? I mean, she's just dandy. I talked to her long distance only last night. Talk to her? How can you talk long distance to a horse? Well, you pick... <laughs> oh, oh, that Francis. Yes. Yeah. I thought you meant the other Francis. You know, the one I mean, don't you, Cousin Fanny? Of course. Your wife. Yeah, my what? I never knew you were married, George, old boy. Oh, well, it's uh, all sort of a secret. We eloped. It's in Niagara Falls. Niagara... <laughs> Niagara Falls. <Yeah. laughs> boy, that's a hot one. <laughs> yeah. What's so hot about Niagara Falls? Well, uh, Leo just thinks it's funny that you'd eloped to Niagara Falls when you've lived right there all your life. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't stand around here, folks. I've got to catch a train. What about your automobile? I hate him again. Come on, Leroy. I'm coming, Pappy. So that was your cousin George, well, Fanny. And you got the nerve to criticize my <laughs> Oh, dear. Wait a minute, Uncle Mort. Where are we going? Out. Let's get away from there before that gorilla gets hep. But if you'll just... He'll ring my neck. How do I manage to get into such affairs? It was Cousin Fanny that did it. Where are you taking me, Uncle Mort? As far away as our chubby little legs will carry us. Now, don't feel dilly-dally, Leroy. But, Gio, you can't scram like this. I can't, huh? Why not? By George, it was a lucky thing I kept calm and cool all through that encounter. But, Uncle Mort... What have you been but Uncle Morning about, Leroy? Come out with it. I've been trying to tell you all along. We've got to go back to the store. Why? You're still wearing that baby blue bathrobe. Oh! <laughs> Now, Mr. Llewellyn. Oh, yeah. Hello, Uncle Mort. Hello, Leroy. Uh, hello. Oh. Did you get something nice for Mr. McGee? No, we had a terrible time. I haven't been pushed around so much since my baby carriage days. Gosh, you never saw so many places out of so much stuff that so many people wanted so bad. Uh, what sort of present were you working for? Well, Llewellyn, something unusual and expensive that he doesn't have already. Yeah. Uncle Mort almost got a dandy baby blue bathrobe, but after he took it outside to see how it looked in the daylight, he took it back. Yeah. Well, we'll go down and try it again tomorrow. Maybe you'll come along, Marjorie, to help me. Say, there's something missing in this room. I was wondering how long it would be before you noticed the difference. Yeah. <laughs> well, what is it? Come, come, Llewellyn, don't be coy. 
What have you done? I took Mr. McGee's present, whacked it out of here, and walked it in a wampus womb closet. Uh, <laughs> you did, eh? And why did you do that? Oh, just so you could resist opening it before Christmas. Well, that took a lot of nerve. Oh, no, it just took a lot of strength. Yes. <laughs> Believe me, before I was fool, I bitterly regretted starting the whole proposition. Uh, Willie, I was a wreck. Yes, Mr. Llewellyn worked quite hard. Llewellyn, the next time you poke your probing proboscis into my personal affairs, I'm going to take a swing at it. What was that, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> if you fool around with something that's no skin off your nose, why, by George, it will be. Oh, please, Mr. Gildersleeve, don't lose your temper. Uh, who's losing their temper? But you're raising your voice. Who's raising their voice? You. You're just angry because I hit your present. Oh, is that so? I suppose you know everything that's going on in my mind. <laughs> yep. I can weed you like a dictionary. Yes. If you can read me like a dictionary, why don't you turn to the letter D and under discharged? You'll find that's where you are. Why, Mr. Gildersleeve, what do you mean? I mean that you're fired. Dismissed. Finished. Sacked. Now, do you understand? Well... All right. That's the way you feel. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Marjorie. Goodbye. Goodbye, wee boy. Goodbye, Mr. Llewellyn. What's he getting so huffy about? I never saw such an excitable fellow in all my life. But the man has got no Christmas spirit. Making me fire him right before the holidays. <laughs> he didn't get us paid, did he, Uncle Moore? By Jove, that's right. You better run after him, Leroy, and tell him to come back for his money. Okay, Uncle Moore. Uh, and Leroy. Yes, Uncle? Uh, tell him if he... Uh, Behaves himself, he can come back to work. Sure. He had no right getting me all worked up after a hard day shopping. I'm not an unreasonable man, am I, Marjorie? Of course not, Uncle Moore. Yeah, I'm just as nice as the next man. Sometimes nicer, too. I couldn't see him anywhere, Uncle Moore. You mean he's gone? Well, it was snowing rather hard. Oh, jumping jeeps, I've turned him out into the cold with only a thin Macintosh. Oh, now don't you worry, Uncle Mort. Just call him at his hotel tomorrow after you've both cooled off. Yes, of course. Oh, I can't do that. I don't know where he lives. Uh, do either of you? No, I don't think so. Not me. Oh, my goodness. I'm a cad. I'm a bounder. No, not a bounder, just a cad. <laughs> I won't be able to look myself in the face the next time I shave. What'll I do? Say, maybe Bertie knows where he lives. Oh, yes, Bertie. Maybe she does. I'll go find out. Uh, Bertie? Yes, sir? Do you know where... Llewellyn, what are you doing here? Oh, just eating my supper, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, <laughs> Going down? Hey, wait a minute! Uh, no use, Leroy. They're booking passage on those elevators a couple of days in advance. Uh, let's wander into the furniture department. Well, we've looked every place else for a present. Maybe we'll find something there. Yes. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about Fibber McGee's present, Marjorie. I only wanted to rest. My feet ache clear up to my shoulder blades. Oh, poor Uncle Mort. Yeah. Look, here's a nice big leather chair. Huh? Try it, why don't you? Oh, thank you. I will. Uh, very comfortable. Now, if I could only take my shoes off, but there I go, daydreaming again. Hey, look at the buttons on the arm of this chair. Huh? I wonder what this one does. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh. Help me, the chair is now a bed. Oh, Leroy, now look what you've done. See, the back goes down and the bottom comes up. Here, I'll give you a hand, Uncle. You know, on second thought, this is so nice, I think I'll take 40 winks. <laughs> Wake me up in 1942, will you? Uncle, you can't sleep there. Oh, yes, I can. Watch me. Say, hey, this is certainly a great invention. Now, I wonder what this button does. Oh, 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 oh. you spoiled everything. It's a chair again. How do you, folks? Interested in the Snorwell reclining chair? Oh, is that what it is? Well, a mighty cozy little one-man couch. And an ideal Christmas present for father, husband, friend, or boss. Uncle McGee, how about it? Yeah, Uncle McGee, how about it? Yes, <laughs> See, that's not a bad idea. In fact, it's the best one I've had so far. Let me tell you about some of the Snorwell features. Oh. Three comfy, cuddly positions. Yes? Sitting, snoozing, and sleeping. Made of the toughest bull leather. Overstuffed, underslung. Why, you couldn't be more tickled if you bought a feather bed. Huh? Buy one for the rest of your life. Catch on? Yes. Oh, brother. Now, there's a salesman. What do you think, Uncle Moore? Well, how much is it? Thirty-nine ninety-five. That's without any of the accessories and attachments, of course. Oh, yeah. You mean it's got attachments like a vacuum cleaner? Yes, sir. The Snorwell is a first fully mechanized chair. Well, I'm interested now. 
This is for a friend of mine who is rather mechanically minded. Yes? Yes, he invented an illuminated sundial once. Yeah, for cloudy days, you know. <laughs> yeah. Huh? No, you wouldn't know. <laughs> Let me show you these features. Uh? Here's the overhead reading lamp. Yes. Also, dandy for shaving. Yes. Then we have a combination ashtray and cigar lighter that appears and disappears at the touch of a button. Uh, what does it do with the ashes? Dump them under the rug? Uh, uh, we also have an electric clock and a compartment for sandwiches with a tank for ice water. Yeah. Gee, it does everything but sing you to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> It'll do that, too. What? For $24 more, we'll put a little radio inside the headrest. My goodness, if you tack a mailbox on the side of this chair, you could live in it. <laughs> oh, this one seems a little damaged. Look at this crack in it. Crack? Yeah. That is no crack. What? It's a slot for old razor plate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, Uncle, the more I hear about it, the more I'm convinced that this is just the present for Mr. McGee. So am I. A young man, how much did one cost with all the accessories? Well, the Super Deluxe Shoot the Works model sells for $119.95. Oh, my dear. But what do you think, children? Oh, yes, take it. What do you got to lose? $119.95. <laughs> well, I guess I'll do it just the same. Gee, I knew I'd sell one of these someday. What? Uh... <laughs> Uh, where is it to be delivered, sir? Uh, it goes to Fibber McGee, 79 Whistle Vista, Whistle Vista. Yeah. Can you have it delivered there before Christmas? Yes, sir. We can send it out by express this afternoon. Yeah, good. Uh, charge it to Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Uh, here's my card. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve, and season's greetings. Yeah. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, come on, you two. We can go home now. Certainly is a load off my... Well, hello, Judge Hooker. Uh, Christmas shopping, I see. Oh, hello, Gildersleeve. How are you, Marjorie? Just fine, Judge Hooker. Season's greetings, Judge. Thank you. You all look so happy, there can only be one reason. Yeah? You've just finished buying the last of your holiday gifts. Yes, that's it. And it certainly was a humdinger. Yes, sir, it was for... Uh, Leroy, let's keep it a secret. It was for a certain very good friend of mine, Judge. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's a real pal, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll be seeing you. Come on, children. Let's make another try for the elevator. Uh -huh. Say, could that present be for me? After all, I have been a pal to him. I'd just like to know. <clears throat> Young man. Yes, sir? What, uh, I was, uh, my friend who was just here, he mm. told me what he bought, but it slipped my mind. What was it again? Oh, it was a present. A Snorwell reclining chair with $80 worth of accessories. Well, well, that must be for me. Gildersleeve broke the springs in my best lounge chair, and now he's making up for it. Say, now I'll have to get him something better than that flashlight I bought him for Christmas. <laughs> Thank you, young man. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Gee whiz. So that's Fibber McGee. <laughs> <laughs> going on in this house? Mm -mm. Sounds like somebody's raising a rumpus in the rumpus room. I'm going to investigate. Mm. I don't know why I'm so brave. In fact, I don't know if I'm so brave. I better stop here in the kitchen first. <laughs> now I feel better. Peculiar how much confidence a couple of carving knives gives a lady. <laughs> Stop what you're doing. I got you surrounded. I mean, I got you covered. Uh, Bernie, what are you doing here at this time of the night? Oh, Mr. Gillsley. Oh, my goodness. I thought it was a burglar. Yep. Oh, my stars in the firmament, that was a burglar. Huh? What's that all chopped up, Mr. Gillsleeve? Oh, chopped up? Oh, well, that's uh, the present Mr. McGee sent me. Uh... Oh, then that means there wasn't no burglar no how. Huh? Honest or truly, Mr. Gillsleeve, you ought to be ashamed of yourself what? scaring folks at 3 a.m. in the morning and sneaking around in your pajamas, uh. snooping at your Christmas presents ahead of time. Lucky I caught you before you got it open. Now, you go on back to bed. Yeah, but Bertie. Go on, now, get you understand what that is? No. You what? know what you is? No, what? You is a problem, Uncle. That's what. Is Good it? night. <laughs> Oh, 
Judge Hooker, yes. Come right in, Judge. I'm still a few days early, but I couldn't wait. Uh, Merry Christmas, Gildersleeve. Well, well, and what's this? Oh, just a little present I picked out for you, Gildy old pal. Yeah, uh, for me? Oh, <laughs> well. <laughs> what is it, Judge? A set of matched golf clubs in a leather bag. Oh, Judge, you shouldn't have done it. By the way, I've got something for you. Oh, no. Well, I didn't expect anything. Well, it isn't very much. Oh, I bet it isn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had it right here in the hall. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Here it is. This little box. Huh? Uh. This little box? Huh? Oh. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Gildy. Oh, won't you come in and look at our tree, Judge? No, no, I've got to be getting along now. I uh, feel a, a headache coming on. Oh. <laughs> goodbye. Uh, goodbye, and thanks for the wonderful present, old pal. Welcome, and goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Say, Marjorie, look at the dandy golf outfit Judge Hooker gave me for Christmas. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. Uh, what did you give him, Uncle Moore? The pants presser I almost sent to McGee. <laughs> Oh, sure. Come on, Marjorie. Uh, what is it, Leroy? Look at this. Somebody tried to get into the box filled with my geese and Uncle Moore. Oh, why, yes. Yeah. Uh, Chips and splinters all around and holes in the box. Uh, why, who could have done it, Uncle? Uh, a mice. Uh, <laughs> hey, we better take a look inside and see if it's uh, damaged any. But it's still four days till Christmas, Uncle. Well, but who knows what's happened to it. We better act quickly. Uh, let me have that hatchet. Uh, thank you. Uh, of course, you know, I'd never open it under ordinary circumstances. Ah, <laughs> yeah. uh, there. Yeah, put the lid someplace, Leroy. Yeah. Well, everything's all right so far. Uh, at last. I'm so excited I can hardly tear off the wrappings. <laughs> now, now we can see what we can see. What's this? Oh, a card. Uh, Dear Chum Gildy. Oh, good old fibber. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And here's your old lawnmower back. Signed, Fibber McGee. The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. You know, people who won't try new things certainly miss a lot. Yes, you just can't know whether you really like something or not until you actually try it yourself. That's why I urge everyone to try delicious parquet margarine made by Kraft. Because you're really missing something if you hadn't tried this truly modern margarine. First of all, you're missing the delicate appetizing flavor that makes parquet margarine outstanding. Why, Americans from coast to coast have found they prefer parquet margarine because it tastes so good, both for table use and for cooking, too. Secondly, parquet margarine is an economical source of food values your family needs. Now, that's very important these days. Proper nutrition is essential to national defense. You see, parquet margarine is wholesome and nutritious. It's one of the best energy foods you could serve. And especially important in the wintertime, Kraft adds 9,000 units of vitamin A to every pound of parquet, making it a dependable source of this vitamin the year round. Now, with food prices rising, you owe it to yourself to find out how delicious and nourishing economical parquet margarine is. So don't put it off. Ask your food dealer tomorrow for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Uh, well, hand me those pajamas, Leroy. Here you are. Yeah, thanks. And to think that now that extra shirt, Marjorie. It's in the bag already, Uncle. Oh, well, I'll show him a thing or two. Excuse me, Uncle Moore, but where are you going? The Whistle Vista, my dear. I'm going to try and get back my $119 chair before it's delivered to Fibber McGee's house. You aren't going to be way over Christmas, are you? Oh, no. I'm just going to be there Tuesday night. And remind me on the way to the station. I've got to stop at the cut-rate drugstore. What for? To get McGee another pants presser. Merry Christmas, everybody, and good night. <laughs> Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>